Hi, this is Tony from Historic and American Homes. I'm creating this new video series to share some of the uh, knowledge I've acquired over the years on the use of SketchUp and in particular home design, home planning, some basic building code um, issues that people might need to know, some basic structural issues that are helpful to know if you're, if you're thinking of designing your own house or even just want to work out your basic ideas to take to another designer. I expect this series will take probably five or six videos to chart the process from start to end. Uh, they won't be really in depth. There will be a lot of different issues to cover and I want to just give a short overview of the whole process. At, uh, at, after that, it'll be great to go back in and just delve into each of the topics as they come up individually, detailing, structural details, uh, codes, space planning. These are all the things that come up over the course of a design. I'm depending on you guys to uh, leave comments. Tell me what you think of this. It's the first. My goal is to try to find the right balance between the SketchUp techniques and home planning. Two separate things. I don't know what you all are going to want the most. There are a lot of good SketchUp how-to videos out there. wasn't really my intention to try to teach all the ins and outs of SketchUp, but um, I will certainly cover that more if that's something people want. Uh, and if you want more of a focus on the actual planning and designing of the house, uh, let me know that as well. I'm depending on you for your comments. Thanks. So the brief here was to do a small house under a thousand square feet. It was to have it's to have two bedrooms, each with its own bath. One of the baths will also serve for guests and visitors. Uh, the general look of the house is inspired by elements of mid-century modern design. Uh, in basically is intended to face one direction. It sort of opens preferably towards the south. And uh, the I am the client in that this is going to be a design that I put on my website for uh, stock house plans for sale online. So being the client, I can make it just the way I want it. Let's see. So let's start with uh, the space program. I mean, that's that's the essence of, of where the design starts. What do you need? So th under a thousand square feet, two bedrooms, two baths. Let me close the roof off here and take a look inside. The idea was that it, even though it's a small house, it should feel spacious. So to have a great room that's as um, open as possible uh, to give a, a large space as well as the smaller spaces. We have the north side entrance, uh, main entrance into a small uh, entry lobby with a coat closet and a towel, a linen closet or broom, brooms, things like that. Adjacent is a bathroom. There will be laundry next to the bathroom. They keep plumbing close together. And then there will be a smaller bedroom with a rather tight but workable walk-in closet. On the other side of the great room will be a master bedroom suite, which I'm still developing here. And then the great room itself in the middle. In as far as inspiration, mid-century modern was a starting point, I've, but I've been looking at some of the re recent designs by various designers that are working in the same vein. I thought I'd share a few of those with you. This is from the website called houseplans.com, and these are three that I just uh, happened across this morning that I thought would make for interesting uh, analysis, brief analysis. This, as you can see, it's got the same concept I'm working with of a single roof line, a shed roof. Uh, and exposed beams. Uh, this is a sloping site and I'm designing for a flat site since it's a stock plan and I can't uh, tailor it to a specific site. Things I like about this, I love the cladding. Uh, this is a nice contrast. The stair is very attractive. That I won't be able to work with since my design is flat. Things I don't care for, I think that they are these roof lines <clears throat> with what looks like a sheet metal edge are rather blocky and heavy looking here here especially this one here is really chunky i find i find that the roof lines are a little bit problematic because of that otherwise it's a very very attractive looking uh, 
house. Here's another. Uh, this is a single level, so the mine more along the lines of what I'm going to be doing with my design. Um, they've run the beams parallel uh, in the opposite direction from where I'm going. Some good some good ideas here. I like the I like the pipe columns and the exposed beams. I I like a more delicate this this roof line is a little bit more graceful. It's not as chunky as the other one. Problem with these sunshades, I'm not too keen on these. They look like stock craftsman house sunshades. They don't seem to fit with this design at all. Minor thing though. And then we'll look at one more here. This I also found very attractive for its combination of, of um, materials, the vertical lines of the wood siding, the horizontal lines of the stonework. And then again, the roof lines, they're fairly thick, but by having it broken up into two, bands uh, it helps to relieve some of the weight and make them look a little bit lighter on their on their walls overall i think this is a very attractive elevation so these are some of the images i'm working with to start uh i've got them in the back of my head as i as i get going here as inspiration okay preliminary layout we already looked at that a bit i kind of jumped ahead on that <clears throat> i'll get into a little more detail about things like the kitchen i mean in a small house where you want to have a develop a larger space, it's uh, a danger with the circulation of having sort of people going everywhere and no and no calm spots. You really need calm spots. So for a start, you don't want people moving through the kitchen space. That means that from the entrance to actually take your groceries to the kitchen, you need to go around. But on the on the advantage, the plus side is that you don't have people moving through the kitchen on their way from one spot to another. So the kitchen can be much more functional uh, and effective. And yet it's still open to the main, to the great room itself. Excuse me here while I zoom out here. We're looking through the window. Uh, it's going to have a island for eating sink we've got the cooking on this side and uh, the refrigerator is tucked in here between the linen broom closet and the coat closet this will be a set of closets that are nicely paneled to match the kitchen um, cupboards themselves with the idea of making it more look more like a piece of furniture in the room rather than a, a wall you see, it doesn't go all the way up to the ceiling. Let me turn the roof back on. So there's the roof. You can see the roof coming down. We've got some window. We've got some some extra light coming in on the backside here. And these, this does not go all the way up to the ceiling. It allows you to really enjoy the entire volume. That gets into uh, some of the structure. I'll touch on some of the basic structural elements. This is going to be built on a concrete slab on grade. So we're we're seeing the slab here. Now as a start I've just made something that's 12 inches thick above my ground plane so the floor surface is 12 inches above the ground plane. As we develop the model further towards making the final construction drawings that will get uh, refined in terms of its geometry but I just like to start when I'm doing a layout like this with a 12 inch square box. Raise it up 12 inches and that becomes the base for my whole design. I'll make it bigger bigger than it needs to be and then squeeze it in as I work on the layout. So I can I can just pull it out to however far I, I think I'm gonna need, bigger than I bigger than I need, start working my layout on the surface and then I have and then I can cut it back in once I've got the layout refined. So that's a slab on grade. Uh, we've got two by six framed walls that will allow for sufficient insulation for modern requirements. So these walls are actually a two by six is actually five and a half inches wide. So that wall is actually shown as five and a half inches. That's purely structure. That's no finishes. When I design these, when I do these designs, my, my process is always to build up the elements for the structure in their actual dimension. This means that later on, when it comes time to do the dimension to drawings, I can connect to those elements accurately and put accurate dimensions on the plans. Later, as we're developing the finishes, those will be a separate element built on top. 
You'll see that a couple of videos down the line. So two by six walls. We've got uh, parallel rows of um, beams to support the roof. I set the spacing based on actually a preferred uh, Marvin patio door that I happen to like that I think will work really well with this design. So the columns and the beam spacing is based on the uh, width of the patio doors. And then for the roof, for this design, it's a little bit unconventional, but not too far out. Instead of framing the roof, I'm going to use something called SIPS, Structural Insulated Panel System. And it's a kind of a sandwich of rigid foam insulation between two layers of oriented strand board. It makes a very stiff, rigid roof structure that's highly insulating better than framed roofing because it has no interruptions from lots of framing. <clears throat> you pay a little more for it, but at the same time, it arrives out on the job site in a few pieces. They go up really fast, and you've got your vault and your roof framed and insulated really quick. A roof like this probably goes in in one day. So I'm going to be using SIPs for that. We'll look at that more in detail later as well. So to wrap up, this video, the first one in the series, I'm just going to mention a few things that I plan to work on next. In the next video, we're going to look at the kitchen a little more. It's basically laid out now, but I wanted to say how I got it to that point. And more importantly, um, more thoroughly, we will look at the masked bedroom area and particularly the bathroom and the walk-in closet. As you can see, I've got some fixtures already set out. I like to arrange. I don't just draw the walls wherever they are. I start by putting in furniture fixtures and then figuring out how I'm going to enclose the necessary space based on what needs to be in it. So we'll look at those next. And then in the remaining videos in this series, I'm going to go into some more technical detail on things like the, how, how the concrete slab on grade is designed, the uh, kinds of insulation, how insulation um, treatment, what kind of insulation treatments it needs, walls, their insulation, roof, its insulation, um, more detailing on the walls, the exterior wall finishes to, to look good, to resist the effects of rain. And uh, I'll also touch in one video, I'll touch on some of the choices that you have available on a, for a small house uh, for your utilities, your how to how to handle hot water, how to handle air conditioning if you're in a climate that needs air conditioning, heating, all the different choices available, and most important of all, I like fireplaces. I don't know about you, but I like a house that has a fireplace. So I had in mind that this wall here, which is going to be sort of the focal point of the whole great room, on this on this side. Be a great opportunity for a fireplace with some built-in seat next to it, some shelves, and that's going to extend. This gap's going to get some windows, and that's going to have some kind of treatment that carries out the line of the of the fireplace wall into the uh, back into the garden in the back here along along this edge, which in the process may enable me to create a little bit more of a kind of private patio for the master bedroom. So there'll be a kind of privacy screen here that works into the fireplace wall. And we'll see if I can make it work, but hopefully we'll also end up with a small fireplace in the master bedroom. So that's all what's to come. I hope that uh, this intrigued you all enough and you're going to find it interesting enough to come back and watch the rest of them. Please do leave comments. Tell me what you think of it so far. Uh, tell me the kinds of projects you're planning to work on. Anything I can do to help make the world a more beautiful place. That's all I'm after. So I hope you enjoyed this and I wish you all a great day. Oh wait, don't go away yet. I almost forgot to say, please like this video if you liked it and subscribe and hit the little bell for notifications. It's a non-monetized channel at this point. I'm not planning on running ads and all that. I just want to share this information with people and learn more myself in the process. So like I said, hit that bell if you want notifications. Love to see the likes. Okay, you all have a great day now.